Welcome back to the program. You're listening to Business in Vancouver on Roundhouse Radio 98.3. We're the daily business program from the Business in Vancouver newspaper and BIV.com. I'm Kirk LaPointe. And I'm Haley Wooden. We've chatted before about the increasing sophistication of cyber attacks and malware. And fortunately, the technologies that guard against security breaches, they're also evolving. With us to have a look at some of the enterprise solutions available to companies in this area is Jeff Fox. He's the CEO at Vancosys Data Security. Thanks for joining the show. Thank you, Haley. Thank you, Court. Kirk. Are you uh, are you both uh, are you winning or losing the battle? What do you think? Uh, it, it is a uh, equilibrium. So the, this industry tends to change a lot as the uh, as the good guys look and find look for and find solutions for problems that are occurring in the world. The bad guys come up with something new. So winning and losing is a uh, small little battles that uh, technology and those of us that work in this area are at the forefront of, uh, of uh, finding problems to these solutions. What about winning and losing the battle to get companies to adopt some of the solutions? Uh, it, so this is a, an interesting question, mainly because uh, large enterprises tend to move slowly. Uh, they have existing systems. They have... Um, process policy budgets that they need to adhere to. Um, it, one always thinks that when you, uh, when you hear a breach uh, somewhere around the world with a large company, other companies will jump on to new technologies and adopt them. The reality is they usually have a lag or a time when they can adopt technologies due to their uh, internal processes uh, moving forward. So it's, it's, it's tough, Haley, for a lot of companies, but they are getting better, and and with uh, as with what's known as cloud-based uh, technologies, these companies can adopt them more quickly and at a lower cost. I can understand the lumbering nature of the large company, but I also uh, can understand the the economic challenge that a lot of smaller firms have mm-hmm. in keeping themselves protected, particularly if for some reason there is uh, someone with. A vengeance out there trying to drive their system into the ground. Mm-hmm. Um, how much success do you think we have out there in the small and medium enterprise sector trying to make sure that they are secure? It, it's interesting that small and medium companies uh, are well protected. Um, they can move faster, they can adopt technologies. Uh, they're willing to try newer technologies. Oh, yeah. uh, and at the same time, when we look around the world, the bad guys usually targeting big companies, usually not small and medium. And usually the reason for that is there's some uh, monetary gain or theft. And, and if someone uh, like a hacker is going to go to the effort to uh, attack a system, they're going to pick a large player. They're not going to be bothered with someone small or medium, mainly since there's no, there's no monetary gain. They may, act, may gain access to a system or small number of employees, but majority of the time, a hacker is not doing this for malicious intent. There's an economic reason why they are attacking an organization. So large companies tend to be their main targets. For the most part, when we're talking about security, is the focus on digital cybersecurity, or is there still quite a risk by way of people leaving a computer unlocked or leaving a phone somewhere and it can be accessible that way? So uh, in our homes, we, we all have PCs. Many of us have moved towards laptops, and we have a layer of security called our front door. So we lock, put our key in and we lock yeah. our front door and that pre- prevents someone from entering our home and getting access not just to our PC but all our other stuff that we accumulate. In an enterprise environment, it's much the, the same. Um, that being said, employees, PCs, whether they're Windows or Mac-based, they are left unattended. Uh, they are easier to um, access. Uh, by someone that's unauthorized. Uh, Granted, uh, employees do tend to know each other if they are familiar with each other on a daily basis. More companies, however, are engaging contractors, uh, especially in large companies, familiar faces are unknown. So as people move around within an office, they sometimes don't question whether someone they don't know should be there or not. And if that person sits down at a PC, they 
either turn a blind eye, even though they may have been told to report unknown people that are unfamiliar to them, but this is how um, this is how compromises happen within the workplace, as opposed to someone gaining from outside. That's really interesting uh, that that we uh, we trust a certain amount, and we mistrust a certain amount too, and we don't necessarily have the right balances mm-hmm. in the workplace at the point. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the one underlying um, security uh, prevention uh, policy that most organizations have is training. So they remind their employees using certain mediums, whether they're uh, reminder cards, regular uh, quarterly education ses- uh, sessions, uh, organizations, uh, and for good reason, do want to create a security mindset in their employees. That being said, we all have our day jobs. We all go about doing things, and we're all uh, literally hammered at work with administrative policies that uh, our organizations want us to remember and want us to put into our our work day. That that being said, we usually uh, we're all human. We forget. We forget to log off our PCs. We forget to um, uh, sometimes even uh, sometimes even um, change our passwords when we're told to. Uh, so uh, so these are all not for lack of not wanting as an as an employee to 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 maintain security. We just forget. Well, and I have to think part of that too is if someone looks unfamiliar, but you're not sure, you don't want to tattle on someone necessarily. There's that fear as well, being a team member, not wanting to rock the boat. But there's got to be a way maybe for technology to alleviate human errors and people having to say, hey, I don't think that person should be here, right? Yeah. So um, a trends that have come about in the past number of years are taking the responsibility of remembering off the employee and, and uh, creating innovative systems which uh, do what's called continuous authentication and security in the background. So these systems come in a variety of different uh, variety of different um, uh, technology areas. Uh, one uh, area that's gaining a lot of interest is uh, uh, around the world called uh, biometrics. So, so facial recognition, thumbprint, eye scans, those kinds of things? That's right, Kurt. Right, yeah. So these uh, are um, unique imprints to each of us. Um, more technologies, including smartphones, are allowing us to uh, fingerprint, authenticate into them. Even some PCs also have fingerprint readers. Uh, these are uh, very effective safeguards and additional authentication layers to, um, in ways, take off remembering uh, what an employee has to has to do to gain access. So the the goal here is to um, do away with passwords that can be forgotten or right. or, yeah. or passwords that are uh, invented by employees that are, are cryptic. And yeah. even though an employee does have a challenge such as a fingerprint to access their equipment um, they don't have to remember anything my perception of that technology would be that it would be quite expensive is it coming down in price in such a way now that a lot of companies can gain access to it because I have to think that that is one of the great solutions around uh, you know the the intrusion areas around biometrics are excellent solutions the um, the cost for enterprise solutions in that area are coming down, and it's it's not just affordable for small and medium companies, large enterprise companies that need to protect a lot of employees. It's very attractive. What is a concern there that's that's non-technical is privacy issues. Mm-hmm. So it, it, employees, uh, uh, whether they're private sector or whether they work in a in a union collective agreement environment. They um, likely do not want to give up personal information. So whether that's a fingerprint or a facial scan or um, biometrics such as a iris in your eye, um, that information is 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 very personal. Yeah, and and I would think too that the corollary of that is the capacity to surveil 
your employees. So, you know, geez, Jeff, you only had 300 keystrokes there in the last couple of hours. Uh, you're not a very productive man, are you? That kind of thing. Does that, does that work as well? If, if, if that's the, the, uh, the big brother environment, Kirk, that <laughs> I as an employee would be subjected to, I, I probably in all seriousness would question that organization sure. that I, that I'm being, uh, uh, that I am being micromanaged and getting, getting back to security. There yeah. are, uh, biometric, biometric is very, is very effective. effective. It's, it's one of the most effective, effective authentication, authentication or organizations. And, um, those of us in the vendor space, uh, that, uh, um, manufacture and sell products in that area. We've just got to be very careful about privacy concerns. Some, some organizations, um, uh, such as military, um, usually uh, trust and behold their employees to give up a fair amount of, of, their, of their privacy just for, for, uh, um, to, to, to protect a, a, uh, that area of the government. But uh, private sector enterprises, that's, that's a, still a, an area with a lot of growth. And I have to think, too, part of the privacy piece is ensuring that the company that maybe asks its employees to use biometric authentication guards then that really sensitive information from someone coming and having access to very personal data. Uh, they do, and a lot of vendor systems do do that. Uh, now we get back into um, a, a week never goes by when you hear about some hacker getting into a system. So they, if they can get into your system, they can potentially steal not just credit card information, which is usually what they're going after, um, but other uh, important information, such as your identifying fingerprint or something else that's been it's been stolen, uh, or, or, and is a value to to a hacker somewhere around the world. Um, so on one hand, it's a uh, they are safeguarded internally by these systems. On the other hand, organizations are always targets for um, stealing this, this, this private information. Jeff, a pleasure having you back on the show. Thanks for an update on the winning, losing struggle between cybersecurity and cyber threats. Good to have you on. You're welcome, Haley. Keep fighting, keep fighting the bad guys, Jeff. That's Thank you. Fighting Kurt. the good fight. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you for having me back. It's good to have you. Jeff Fox, he's the CEO at Vancosis Data Security. You're listening to Business in Vancouver on Roundhouse Radio 98.3. I'm Haley Wooden. And I'm Kirk LePoint. Stay with us at Roundhouse Radio 98.3.